Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Maine Life Offseason. I'm your host, Connor, and this show is all about highlighting some of Maine's best summer and fall tourist destinations, but in the wintertime, to showcase what life is all about. And we're here in Deer Isle, Stonington, and Isle of Ho for today's adventure, an area known for its rich history in the lobstering industry, and also known as one of Maine's best tourist destinations. We want to uncover the importance of community as locals invite us into their main lives during the off season. The outpouring of support from the community was immediate and hasn't stopped. To this island, lobstering is the main lifeline. If you live here, that's what you count on. In the wintertime, our main goal is to keep this service running, to keep the islanders uh, uh, with food and groceries and uh, provisions they need to survive out there. For over 100 years, it's been the living room for folks on the island. Restaurants in the winter has never really been a thing. Um, you've always had one or two. So it is something that's needed. Hi, I'm John Rennie. Thanks for joining us on Maine Life Off Season. I hope you enjoy this Maine adventure. Well, you know, I think the secret is that we live here, so we know what you need. So we have things that people in Maine need because we live here too and we need them. So I think that makes it very special for us. So we're here in downtown Stonington, right on the fish pier where all the action happens. To get here, we had to come through Deer Isle, and on the way down, we stopped at the best place in town for a cup of coffee. Check it out. Hi, I'm Megan Wood, I'm co-owner of 44 North Coffee here in Deer Isle, 7 Main Street. This is our cafe, and we're really happy to have you. So 44 North Coffee started in 2010, so we are in our 12th year right now, which feels really good to be a rural business year-round in an um, island community. Um, so we started with a roasting facility in Deer Isle Village and now we have two cafes. We do wholesale, retail, web, all over the country. Um, it's really, it kind of grew naturally organically with me and my business partner. We had no experience in coffee before necessarily. Uh, so we really found a need in this place for year-round employment and for something unique and we've, we've been doing it ever since. I actually grew up here and uh, I went away to school, lived in the city, missed the ocean and moved home. So moving home was a big choice and meeting my business partner, we really wanted to create something that was unique in this community, something that was sustainable and something that was um, full of joy. The outpouring of support from the community was immediate and hasn't stopped. We roast almost entirely organic and fair trade coffee. We buy through a cooperative of roasters in North America called Cooperative Coffee. So we match roasters with growing cooperatives all over the world. So we have coffee from Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia, and we really try to have the freshest and best quality coffee we can find. So here in our cafe, we do pour over, which is a manual brewing technique. Um, in our studio cafe, we also do AeroPress, French press. We always have cold brew on tap. Um, and then a bunch of wonderful pastries from local bakers. So yeah, it's not just, not just coffee here. <laughs> yeah, so Deer Isle Stonington is definitely a seasonal um, destination for a lot of people. However, year round, this community is really tight. It's really strong. The population more than doubles in the summer, but in the winter, it's, it's a core group of incredible people that we're really fortunate between fishermen and teachers, nurses. Um, we have an awesome community. So it's, it's really nice to offer something year round on Main Street for people to come in. This becomes kind of like a, a communal holding space. Like people come in here on daily or weekly and touch base and connect with each other. So even though Deer Isle is a, definitely a seasonal destination, we are open and operating year round. We also have a website, 44northcoffee.com. Uh, you can order our coffee, all our amazing swag, anytime year round. And uh, we're really happy to have you here. And should we go up the hill and check out the roastery? Okay, let's go. Hey, I'm Melissa Raftery. I'm co-founder of 44 North Coffee in Deer Isle, Maine. Uh, you guys just saw our cafe on Main Street, and now we are up at our new roasting and production facility. Welcome. So uh, in this facility, we uh, intake the green coffee beans that we have uh, freighted up from New Jersey, which have then previously traveled a lot further uh, reaches. Uh, we, we have the beans arrive here. We can now take up to five pallets, which has been a huge move um, for us business-wise, for storage and just additional space. 
Uh, we put our green coffee, which is organic and fair trade certified, in our roaster and it moves through the building, gets packaged, and then processed and shipped out. We purchased this building in 2020 and we moved in uh, November 1st of 2021. Often a cup of coffee is the way that people get introduced sometimes to Deer Isle and that just sticks with them. So when they think of the, the place when they're back home in their respective towns, like in Illinois or Ohio, uh, in the winter season, people order up coffee and that just brings that whole Deer Isle experience to them. Well, I know you have a big day ahead in Deer Isle, but before you go, I thought you could try your hand at bagging some coffee. See Ooh. if you're worth a hire. I, I can't promise that I am, but I'll give it a, I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> Yeah, you can just like, you're just opening the bag, taking a scoop. What what weight are we trying to go for? 0 0.75. 0 0.75. So that's, that's 12 ounces. 12 ounces. I did not know that. I love the little love uh, sticky note. Is that making sure like every bag is packed with love? It's, yeah. Pretty much? It's, it's all about the energy, right? It's that's like, right. That's good. So this fun. is going to be 0 0.75 on the money. You ready for this? Nailed it. Oh, I missed. <laughs> not even close. Not even close. Or that customer, that's perfect. That's pretty good that's right perfect. there. Point seven five six doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so you just go like this. Yep. Got it. Ta-da. Perfect. Look at that. I did that. <laughs> Check this place out if you're in Deer Isle next time. This place is amazing. Thank you guys so much for having us. Thank Had an you. amazing time. I, I didn't get the job, though, unfortunately. So you we got to go We got to go on with the rest of our day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Connor. All right, everyone, so we're back in Stonington. We got our delicious 44 North coffee, thanks to Melissa and Megan. And we're at the Lobster Co-op. It's locally owned by the fishermen, and it's one of two places on the whole entire island where they can buy bait and sell their catch. And one local lobsterman is going to tell us a little bit more about what the industry is like this time of year. Hello, my name's Jason McDonald. I'm a lobster fisherman from Stonington, and my family's been doing it for ever since I can remember. I've done it for 20 years on my own boat. I went with my father a little bit before and my grandfather and his grandfather have all lobstered and scalloped and done everything there is. And I've only had to go lobster and the lobster has been decent for the last 20 years. So we hope that continues. To this island, lobstering is the main lifeline. If you live here, that's what you count on, you know, in the businesses that are here, the construction, you know, in the automotive people, they all count on the lobstermen having a good year so they can, you know, trickle that down through this island economy and without it, it, it would be quite a different town. Lobstering in the winter is slow. A lot of guys, especially here at our co-op, you know, they get done by Christmas. You try to get your traps up, mainly because the weather changes, you know, you just don't get the days. You might be a week to two weeks in between times you go out. You have to weigh each individual person whether it's worth it to you or whether you have the boat and the gear to make it. Most of the time it's fixing gear is what you're doing. You're getting ready for the main season which is the summer and fall. Three months sounds like a long time but it's, you know, it's not. Uh, I enjoy living here. Uh, there's not a lot of people. The community is great someone needs something, you know, the community always helps out. Overall, it's a great place. Thanks for stopping by the Stonington Lobster Co-op. We welcome you to come by anytime to get lobsters, year round. Welcome back everyone from the Fisherman Co-op. We're here now at the Isle of Hoe Boat Services dock where the famous mail boat is. We are on the boat getting ready to go over to Isle of Hoe, part of Acadia National Park. Many tourists come here in the summer and the fall to see Isle of Hoe, but many locals use the mail boat to get to and from Stonington year round. Hi, I'm Garrett Eldridge. Uh, I am the senior captain here at Isle of Hoe Boat Services and welcome you guys to uh, a boat ride to Isle of Hoe in the middle of winter. Here at Isla Ho Boat Services, um, we cater to Isla Ho. We are the lifeline to Isla Ho. That's our main job. Um, in the summertime, we have a little bit of uh, extracurricular activity uh, where we take people out to see puffins and uh, uh, do uh, sightseeing tours for wildlife seals and, and other bird life, um, and some charter trips around the coast. But in the wintertime, 
Our main goal is to keep this service running to keep the islanders with food and groceries and uh, provisions they need to survive out there. I've been working here now as a licensed captain and the manager for the past 23 years. Uh, so I've got quite a history here. I know everybody uh, pretty intimately on the island and they're sort of like big family. What we really contend with this time of year is the, the natural forces of nature. Wind, ice, snow, uh, and a lot of big waves. So it's, uh, it's a whole different time of year. It's a whole different world. We always say in, to people in the summer when, who come up to us and say, this is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. We love to live here. And we say, come join us in January or February. And then you might not like it so much. It's a rugged beauty. Um, you won't see sunsets in the summer like you see in the winter. And uh, just, just the the waves, the big waves we deal with, uh, you know, the surf and uh, uh, having to contend with all of that. It's challenging and uh, very rewarding. Yeah, this is an average winter day. Yeah. Uh, so this, it gets worse. It gets oh, worse. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Some of these waves, like my stomach's dropping out here. Yep. Like I said, it's rugged beauty this time of year. Yeah. You've got a lot of this uh, rough, rough waves happening, surrounded by uh, all this beautiful scenery. And uh, one of the things that's funny about the waves is uh, you see how there's white patches on the ocean there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, old timers called that letting the sheep out of the barn. <laughs> the sheep are out of the barn today. That's awesome. All right, so we made it to Idaho on the mail boat. It was a choppy ride as you saw, but Garrett got us over here safely. It's a little cold to check out the site, so you can bet we'll be back this summer. But now we're going to hop back on the mail boat, get back over to Stonington, because we got a date at the Opera House. My name is Neil, just catching the mail boat from Idaho back to Stonington today. Um, it's a Tuesday and so I have a morning um, regimen of art classes with the children at the Idaho School. It's a one room schoolhouse this year with only four students. Um, I have a kindergartner, a first grader, a third grader and a fifth grader. Um, I've been coming out here for about three years. Uh, there's been a variation of students over the years. Um, but it's always, it's always a treat and it's always a nice trip out. Um, not every mail boat ride is um, calming. <laughs> I've had a few, but um, yeah, no, I couldn't ask for anything better to get a free ride out to a beautiful main island once a week to paint and draw with kids. Hi, this is Jaeger from Berlin City Auto Group. We believe that our community is stronger when we face challenges together. Over the past year, we were able to raise $71,000 for 25 schools across New England. These grants went to special teachers and classrooms to support a variety of needs. Some as simple as clothing and boots to outdoor activity center and even the self-sustaining lettuce farm. To learn more and nominate your school, visit BerlinCity.com. A main adventure to me is what our stores are all about. I don't think there's any other group of stores that has new merchandise coming to their stores five days a week. We do. Every day, there's trucks pulling up to these, our stores. They have stuff that's refilling what we sold, and they also have new things. So that makes it just exciting. It's not like you go in to see the same thing week after week. It's all different. So that's, that's really, I think, our forte is that we just, Something's different all the time, it's always changing, and it's always new, and that's what people want. They want new. Maine is a lifestyle destination. With over 3,500 miles of coastline, lakes, mountains, and four season recreation, there's a reason Maine is known as vacation land. At Harcourt's Waterfront and Fine Properties, we're the Maine real estate lifestyle experts. If you're thinking about moving to Maine, we can help you not only find a property, but the perfect home to fit your lifestyle. Contact us today to make your dream of living in vacation land come true. Harcourts, we're with you all the way. 
Our mission here at Aristal is exactly as our tagline says. It is to help women love what's underneath. Not only the garments and the pieces that they're putting on their body, but the body that they're putting it on. There is nothing more satisfying than when we are working with a woman and she is trying on lingerie for perhaps the first time, whether she's looking for something that's comfortable, something that's beautiful, or maybe something that's a little fun. To see her face light up in the fitting room, that is so worth it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Maine Life Off Season. We're here at Opera House Arts at the Stonington Opera House here in Stonington, Maine. I'm Tony Adams, I'm the Executive Director, and welcome. So the Stonington Opera House uh, was built in 1912. Um, originally it was a house for vaudeville and the like, and then in 1918 they got one of the first licenses to show movies, and they've been showing movies ever since. And then it fell into disrepair in the 90s, and then a group of four founders uh, bought it in 99 and then um, reopened it as Opera House Arts in 2000. And we show a broad base um, of stuff, theater, dance, movies, storytelling, um, really anything you can think of. Uh, and it's a pretty great mix of stuff. So we're showing movies year round, um, first run movies, um, sometimes a week or two after they open in you know, New York, Chicago. We do usually one live event each month. So this month is Island Women Speak, which uh, is a storytelling event. It features women from, uh, one woman from each decade, um, and they tell a story about their life. Um, and then we also do live music um, and other performances throughout the winter. Um, but for over 100 years, it's been the living room for folks on the island in, in ways that are really amazing. You know, I moved here in April to start, and from the jump, I've heard so many amazing stories about what the Opera House has meant to folks, especially in the winter when there's not as much to do here, in ways it's, it's a really incredible legacy to uphold. Typically we do a lot more programming in the summer because there's a lot more folks on the island. Um, and most of the year-round folks are working so much in the summer that they don't have time to see as many shows as they would like. But it's really important that we are providing entertainment and a gathering place for people who are here year-round as well. You know. Um, and that's really important that uh, as we come out of the pandemic and are doing more and more programming that we're not forgetting about the people who have kept the Upper House open for a hundred years. You know? I grew up in a rural place in Michigan that's a lot like Deer Isle. If you uh, swap out the sea and lobster boats for fields and tractors, you might not be able to tell the difference. Um, but it was a place that didn't have anything like the Upper House. And I know what it's like to be in a small community like this without a place like the Upper House. And, and for me, being able to help provide that for folks, um, something I didn't have growing up, is really, really incredible. Thanks again for stopping by Opera House Arts. If you're in the area, we'd love to see you. You can find out more information about our programs at operahousearts.org, and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Maine is such a special place to me and I really enjoy exploring from the coast to the country. Selling real estate for me goes beyond the transaction and, and if you've considered selling, I'd love to just sit down with you, put a plan in place that really makes sense to meet your real estate and financial goals in the future. So check out our website or give us a call. We would love to hear from you. Welcome back everyone. We made it to our final stop of the day. It's dinner time and we're gonna be dining tonight at Finn and Fern, a local favorite year round. We're gonna have some amazing food and share a toast with some of the friends that we met on today's adventure. Hi, welcome to Finn and Fern. We're located on the coast of Maine in Stonington. I'm Leslie, the general manager. And I'm Andy Chapel, the owner. Welcome to Finn and Fern. So here at Finn and Fern Restaurant, we opened up in 2019 uh, in the summer. Uh, it was a very quick, quick summer that year. And then 
We've been going hard ever since. The pandemic was really a problem, but we've bounced back. We've got seating for about 100 here. We have uh, garden seating, we have porch seating, we have inside dining room seating, and hopefully by the time everyone sees this, we'll have another upper deck overlooking the water. So we offer a lot of things. Uh, we have a lot of seafood. Um, being in Stonington, we do a lot of lobster. Um, we do uh, fresh pasta. Andy does all of the pasta. We do uh, pizza, we do burgers, we do steaks. We kind of have a little bit of everything. Um, we have homemade desserts every day. We have a full bar, a lot of specialty cocktails. Uh, so this year has been our, our first official full winter uh, being open. And business has been okay. Uh, it's been enough to sustain us. Um, and it's been enough to keep our crew together. That was the main purpose of being open for winter and also to supply food to the local residents. Uh, up here in Deer Isle, we don't have a lot of food establishments. So it's really important to keep things open all year round. Restaurants in the winter has never really been a thing. Um, you've always had one or two. So it is something that's needed. Um, we have a great local clientele. We have done a lot of um, outside of the box thinking. We've done a cafe, we do pop-up nights, we do um, pizza, burger nights, you know, whatever we can to do affordable, um, you know, fun events to, to keep everybody so that we stay in business and everyone has a place to go. So I came to Stonington on the back of a boat actually. Uh, I was working on a, on a luxury yacht and I, and I came into Stonington Harbor and I fell in love. Like I fell in love with all of Maine. But Stonington and this area in particular, Brooklyn, Deer Isle, is the, the place that I knew where I wanted to be for the rest of my life. Uh, so on tonight's menu is homemade pizzas, Caesar salad, uh, fresh uh, shells Alfredo, I made the shells this morning, um, assorted pastries, and our specialty homemade whoopie pies. From Deer Isle, Stonington, and Isle Ho. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, yes. <laughs> Cheers. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Main Life Offseason. Thanks so much for tuning in, and a huge thank you to our presenting sponsor, Rennie's. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Places and Spaces Maine or on Facebook at Main Life Media. And of course, be sure to tune in next week for another Maine adventure. Actually, Johnny, if you want, is my mic on? Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Oh, my God. But he said, you got to come back in January. So here we are. We're going to take a ride with Garrett over to Isla Ho, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about life here this time of year. Too much. I'm just saying too much. <sighs> Welcome back, everyone. Uh, and this is the means of transportation to get folks over to Isla Ho. And we're going to take a ride with Captain Garrett. And we're going to talk to him a little bit more on what it's like this time of year. It's a little too long, a little too choppy, but not terrible. So we liken this to a carnival ride. Yeah, know? no, seriously, this is, this is great. You get to have a little fun. Oh my goodness. Some of those bigger waves, I just feel like my stomach Hit the, hit the floor here. That'll happen. That'll <laughs> happen. Okay, sorry. At least your hands are warm. Now I don't feel as bad. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one. I think I like. I love the gray. I the, saw the gray. The, like, the maroon was cool too. The one, I but, think. But you know, with the with the outfit today, I think the gray was it's the way working. to go. Lobster, lobster, lobster shoes, shoes. Yeah, everything. Good. That, if that works, if that's good for the camera, I don't know. And then, yeah, you can just like. You just which is one of two places on the island where the local fishermen can sell their pro sell their product. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna get this, dude. The delicious coffee, 44 North. You gotta check them out. We're at the Lobster Co-op now in downtown. It's locally owned by the fishermen, and it's one of two places on the whole island where they can buy bait and sell their catch. And we're gonna talk to a local fisherman about what the product. <laughs> What the product is like? Well, the product is lobster, so it's not changing. Ah. Oh. All right, we made it to Isla Ho on the mail boat. Garrett did a great job navigating the uh, rough seas. This is a beautiful place. We can't wait to come back and check it out this summer because we can't check out the sites today. It's a little too chilly, so we got to hop back in the boat now, go back to Stonington, and 
because we're going to the Opera House.